looking live at a sold-out Grant Field in Atlanta, where Georgia Tech hosts arch-rival Georgia. This ancient rivalry is 106 years old, and at stake, bragging rights for an entire season. And now the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech filing out of its locker room and ready to come on to the field. Good afternoon and welcome everybody with Gary Danielson. I'm Brent Musburger. Folks, we like offense. You come to the right place. Between them, these two teams average 907 yards of offense, which means, Gary, defense becomes a huge issue. Can either of them shut down the other team's offense? Brent, they're giving up 800 yards, though, between them. And usually what happens in these type of games, especially a rivalry game, the quarterbacks, you know, they're going to have their type of games, but one of the two defenses is going to have to step up. Georgia, a couple weeks ago, had a, a big change in their football team. Auburn routed them for over 400 yards in the air. Jim Donnan replaced the entire secondary, including three seniors, to kind of make a little bit of a change in that look. And what happened last week? Ole Miss ran for over 200. Now, Georgia Tech and Georgia Larry's had a problem all year with tackling. They have not been able to stop the ground game. And they gave up to Wake Forest over 300 yards. If you think about this game, one of these two defenses have to help them. All right, the rambling wreck now coming onto the field here in Atlanta on Senior Day. 14 seniors introduced for the final time and the biggest ovation for Joe Hamilton from Alvin, South Carolina, embracing his mother, Ginger. Welcome to the shootout in Atlanta, everybody. I'm Jack Arrude along with the Georgia head coach, Jim Don. And coach, first of all, you elected to take the ball first. Why? Well, they got a lot of firepower. We're going to see what we can do with ours. Now, how many points do you think you're going to have to put on the board to beat this Joe Hamilton-led offense at Georgia Tech? One more than they get, I guarantee you. That's what we got to do. They're a good team. We're going to play hard, Jack. Brent? One more than Georgia Tech scores. They'll take it, won't they? Luke Mange puts the ball on the tee for the Ramblin' Wreck, and they'll kick it off here on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon. Hope all you folks have enjoyed your Thanksgiving holiday. Patrick Ross and Brett Milliken are back deep. Flat hole. 40. Midfield. Great field position for Quincy Carter, their sophomore quarterback from Decatur, Georgia. And we asked Quincy, what is your game plan today against the Ramblin' Wreck? We pretty much take what the defense gives us and coach down and make sure that you know I don't force any passes, I don't check off any runs, you know, that I'll make sure I'm getting us in the right play every down. Quincy brings him up to the line of scrimmage. Two running backs and one tied in. Frequently Georgia opens in a double tie. Quincy the throw on first down. Fires complete. He did catch his tight end. And that is for 11 yards and a first and 10 as we meet the Chili's starting lineup. Here's the offensive line. Keep an eye on number 75, Jonas Jennings, a tackle who's been bothered by a sprained ankle. Seniors on the left side. Terrence Edwards, Robert's younger brother, the freshman wideout, leads this team with nine touchdown catches. Jasper Sanks will also play some running back along with Patrick Pass. And of course, the sophomore, Quincy Carter, on a first and ten, puts it back out again to his tight end. So first they go to Javaris Johnson on the first pass, then Randy McMichael, that for 11 more yards. So Carter making a living with his tight ends early. Quincy Carter came into this football game, I think, playing a great fourth quarter against Ole Miss. He got his bounce going, throwing the ball, as you said, Brent, for over 340 yards. And you can see the game plan. Let's get him started early. We got a quarterback just as good as anybody on either side here, Quincy Carter. Battles down at the 
15-yard line. Wimbush. Let's take a look at the matchup in this football game. You have to give a small check here. Excuse me. A small check here for Georgia Tech, although Georgia started out so well. Georgia's defense just a little bit better. Special teams, they're both about the same. Here it is right here. Intangibles. I think whoever gets turnovers in this football game is going to win this intangibles. But, Brent, if Joe Hamilton gets a last drive with the football, that might be enough to win it for Tech. Johnson with an H-back look. They'll run in his direction. It's Sanks coming around the right side. Huge holes of job being well done by Stinchcomb, Breedlove, and Lucky that time on the right side. It's been a, a problem all year for George O'Leary's defense, just stopping, tackling well, stopping the base plays from any offense they face. That puts so much pressure on the offense for Tech. They've only been held to under 31 points once all year, and they lost that football game. Third down for the Dogs. Sacks tackled from behind that time. Greg Gathers, their fine freshman out of Louisiana, comes in behind him to make the stop. Three true freshmen start for Georgia Tech. Gathers is one of them. going to come right around the play right here and make it from the back side. Pretty good blocking at the point of attack. You would expect to pick up a first down, but when those tailbacks are so deep nowadays, those defensive ends come around the corner and make the play. Looks like they're going to go for it. Donham displays his hand early, and Charles Grant is back in. So their defensive end will line up at the tailback, number 19. That's where they went last time. Again on the toss. Here comes Charles Grant, the freshman, down at the nine-yard line. And the Tech defense holds with Marvius Hester making the stop. Fourth and one. Donnan gambles, and Grant can't get it for him. They not only might have not gotten a first down, they might have lost a defensive end in this football game. Grant took a hit right on the knee, coming around to the outside. You see it stretching out as wide as he can, put the shoulder pad right on the knee and doesn't get it. And Tech stops Georgia, and you can see it lifting off that right knee. You know, Brent, five times Georgia was inside the 20 against Ole Miss and only ended up with one touchdown. Inside the 20-yard line has not been good to Jim Donnan. They went for it on a fourth down occasion early in the Ole Miss game, didn't make it, came back and got points later. Joe Hamilton's first play with Georgia Tech. The defense holds on fourth and one. first down and the dogs were ready for Sean Gregory Richard Seymour their fine defensive tackle making this stop and we asked Joe what do you want to accomplish in the first series see what their plan is you know I, you know I, I want to come out in a couple of different formations just to see you know what we're going to be seeing all game see the intensity of the game see the speed of the game the speed is quick so far. Joe has found that out. Second down and seven. A very conservative opening call by offensive coordinator Ralph Preaching. Now the quarterback draw. Now Joe Hamilton's got the first down. Out beyond the 25-yard line, and we meet our Chili's starting lineup. Joe Hamilton, the ringleader. And his offensive line features three seniors, Burks, King, and Carmen, introduced for the final time here in Atlanta. His receivers, Kelly Campbell at Quickwin, number six. Des White coming off an injury. We'll watch him. Sean Gregory has been the ball carrier. Now on first down, Hamilton brings the rambling wreck back to the line. Protective pocket got a wide open, wide receiver on that left side. And Kerry Watkins streaks down that far sideline. Now defensively, Grant is out. And a green has checked in. So he and Lucky. Grant, injured ankle, not on that lineup. Boss Bailey, yes, that is Champ's brother. Also Kendra Bell, outstanding newcomer. This is the revamped defensive backfield. Can it hold up today against Joe Hamilton and Georgia Tech. Play pick. Hamilton downfield has Des White. Out of bounds at 
the 31-yard line. Lungsley on the cover, but a 22-yard gain. Des White missed last week uh, about three-quarters of the game, went out with a hamstring injury. That really put pressure on this offense, especially feeling in Kelly Campbell as he only ended up with five catches for 47 yards. The combination of Campbell and White really what makes this thing sing for Joe Hamilton. The option look. Gregory behind a block by Wilder, and Gregory makes the most out of it. In, he's out of bounds inside the 30. Gary, how about our Dell game solution? Well, for Georgia Tech, it's going to be a deep zone early, so throw short against it, force a little man, then look for the deep ball. Secondly, they've got to neutralize the two defensive tackles, Stroud and Seymour. That's the strength of that defense, at least for Georgia Tech looking at him. Georgia Tech trying to finish off a drive here in the first quarter inside the 30-yard line. Gregory pounds into the middle of the defensive line, but no more than a yard or two. Let's follow up with what Georgia has to do against them. They must be formation ready. Ralph Friedgen gives you a lot of looks, so don't blow a game just by not knowing where they line up. And when they have a true passing situation, Rush up the middle with five guys. You get that fifth guy to be Kendrell Bell, number 37. He's a great rusher. There's Kevin Ramsey, defensive coordinator on the right, right there. There's third down. Hamilton back in the shotgun for Georgia Tech. Almost intercepted. And a beautiful play by Timmy Wansley, the sophomore from Buford, Georgia. He breaks it up beautifully. Read the pass by Hamilton all the way. Wansley was sitting deep on the play, but look who he's looking at right here. Joe turns around. Now watch how long this short pass takes to get there. When a defensive back can make up five yards, you know the quarterback held on to the ball just a little too long. Manje. What was that? Kicks the field goal is what that is. A 44-yarder and a 3-0 lead. Georgia Tech strikes first in a rivalry game. And Manjo on it. A big welcome to August 6th, making his Georgia Tech rivalry, replacing the late Ugga 5. So the man who just put Georgia Tech ahead, Manje. Short high kickoff out of bounds at the 30-yard line. But Quincy Carter and Georgia now with excellent field position. McMichael is on the left side of the formation. They need to reach the 24-yard line. Carter rolls right. Going to keep it. Going to get the first down. Inside the 20-yard line. Quincy Carter rolling to the right. And an alley open. And he streaked for the first down. Very smart of Quincy Carter to run this ball. I don't think he saw it, but it would have been called a pick here. Watch the receiver pick for the tight end coming out in the flat. Receiver comes down and runs right into the coverage. See that pick? When that happened, the referee was ready to call a penalty, but on a run, no penalty. Georgia floods the left side. Go to the shotgun in the red zone immediately. Run the quarterback draw. Nothing doing. Good play by Felipe Claybrooks. Number 97 was in the middle of things. He's a junior from Decatur, Georgia. That was all about Quincy Carter. They both grew up in the same town. Second down. There's only one senior on... The Tech defense, only one senior playing for the Bulldog defense today. Traveris Tillman, number 26, playing corner. The backup quarterback for Georgia is now on the field, also as a wide receiver, LeBron Mitchell, number 12. They throw to him, and this is Mitchell to the 11-yard line. So a very talented youngster who plays both quarterback and wide receiver makes a big play. Coming up now with third down again. Georgia faces it. Bill Wimbush read the play beautifully. Ricardo Wimbush from Blakely, Georgia, a freshman linebacker, stepped right up and made the stop in the backfield. And now Georgia will go for the field goal. Wimbush gathers in Jeremy Myers. Three true freshmen are starting for this tech defense. As George O'Leary said, if you don't tackle, we're going to go with the young guys. Happened about halfway through the season, and they have responded. F. Hines made four of five last week against Mississippi. This a 30-yarder to tie the rivalry. 
pounds on it. Deadlocked at three as Hines hits a 30-yard field goal. Georgia Tech three, Georgia three. So you come to a game expecting two quarterbacks to razzle-dazzle all day long, and suddenly you wind up in a defensive battle featuring field goal kickers. We've seen that before. And now Georgia having tied it up here against Georgia Tech with a kick to Kelly Campbell, and Campbell cuts back to the 25, out to the 27-yard line, where it will be first down. Joe Hamilton runs the show. Ralph Friesian sends in the plays and all the variety of formations. One of the finest offensive coordinators in college football. Complete to Campbell for seven yards and out of bounds. And we had a chance to ask Friesian, how much trust do you put in quarterback Hamilton? I would never have gone in with all the uh, check with me's we have in, in the National Football League that I have with him. But he seems to have an understanding of what we want to do and how we want to do it and what we want to run into, into uh, certain defenses and what we don't want to run. You see Joe Hamilton, and this is a check with me offense right here. Four wide outs, a deep look from the secondary. Joe's calling the game. And they pound Wilder for the first down. Across the 45-yard line. Number 47, Ed Wilder on the carry. Georgia Tech offense, again, have only been held under 31 points once this year. Ralph Friesian calling the play, setting up the offense. And when you consider that they're playing with their number three tailback, they lost Philip Rogers and Joe Burns. Ed Wilder's been hurt most of the year. You understand what a kind of a job Joe has done this year with the offense. Play fake. Hamilton coming deep down the middle. Breaks free. A 47-yard scoring strike from Joe Hamilton. Let the fireworks begin. Throw a short pass to Dennis White. Throw it deep to the other side. Right down the gut. Ball's in the air, look at that. Perfect, right on stride. Munje adds the extra point. And for the second time today, the Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech goes ahead. First it's the flanker around, and then Campbell for the scoring strike. Munje with the ball on the tee. be Milliken coming out from the two. Short of the 20-yard line by five yards. Great coverage by the Georgia Tech kickoff team. Jeremy Myers, the freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Georgia Tech doing a good job of defending Terrence Edwards, number eight. Carter rolling to the right. Fires complete right at the marker. He hit Jermaine Phillips. And we'll take a break as the first quarter comes to an end with Georgia Tech leading Georgia 10-3. Timeout. So we're back, and Quincy Carter has hit his last four. Second out and 10. Tight end right here. Nobody out. Gets protection. Got the running back pass. And out of bounds, not far from the line of scrimmage with Chris Edwards defending. Now Quincy Carter back in the gun at third down and ten. Hit on the blitz. Fires high, incomplete. But a great defensive call that time as they brought pressure. It was the pressure that saved the touchdown. Because Patrick Pass that time went right down the middle. He beat the safety. Pass is going to go right here, beats the safety on the play, but the blitz inside is what really does it. See the coverage, you see the protection right there, and see this is the guy, of just one more second, and you had a touchdown. Wincop, a 50-yard punt, his last time out. Left foot, high, Hester, and let it bounce.
short this time, and it'll be down near the 30-yard line. Georgia Tech 10, Georgia 3, another 28-yard punt. We'll take a timeout. Back here in Atlanta, Georgia, the equipment staff and the training staff have worked on Terrence Edwards. First, he's got a case of turf toe, so they worked on it physically. Then they went equipment-wise, and they took a set of dykes, and they clipped the front spikes down, cut them in half, hoping to alleviate some of the problem. Joe Hamels is really keeping this defense off balance with his legs in deep passing game right now. Georgia just has no idea where the next attack can come as well. Four down linemen to the dive. Bump and run from the corners. Hamilton's got an alley. Midfield. Out to the 45-yard line. That's why he has more than 10,000 total yards in his fabulous career here at Georgia Tech. And, it, and it's the way he attacks the defense that makes it so tough. You don't know if they're going to run an inside option play. You don't know if they're going to hand off, run a bootleg, throw deep to those great receivers, or do the Nebraska lead option right here. This was basically a run designed for Joe Hamilton, and the number of hits he takes all game and still is able to throw the ball. He's an amazing quarterback for college football. Leading rusher for Perry, 37 yards. This is Gregory. No more than a yard. The middle of the defense led by Josh Mallard, sophomore out of Savannah, Georgia. Number 98 makes the stop for the dog. You know, handing the fullback in this to the fullback like that, even if you only get one, two yards, is like throwing a deep pass in a passing game. You have to keep those tackles and linebackers honest and respecting the fullback. That sets up everything else. Calls pass this time. Fires left side, wide open, Watkins. Down just short of the end zone. A 27-yard pass play. Hamilton. And just as Gary told you, he is having it his way right now. People always ask me, what type of offense do you, you think, Gary, works best? I say the one that keeps the defense off balance. When you don't know whether it's going to be a run or a pass, there's not a defense out there in college football that can stop the team. Hamilton, a great threat also to run inside the five-yard line. Hands Gregory pounds toward the end zone. Touchdown! Georgia Tech scores its second touchdown of the game. A little bit of option, a little bit of fullback, a little quick pass, a little bootleg, a little quarterback draw, and you've got a defensive unit that has no idea where to stop this offense. Manje. It's 17-3, Ramblin' Wreck. It's the tailback behind the right side. Brent Key and John Carmen open the way. Timeout. John Gregory pounds it in, but the drive was impressive. 69 yards and nine plays in just over two and a half minutes. And on that drive, Joe Hamilton was three of three for 40 yards. Manje. Pass. 25. Nice return out of bounds. First down and 10, Quincy Carter needs to take something. A rally the dogs here. Carter off a quick play fake. Gonna go long, wide open, got him! Touchdown, Georgia! Randy McMichael for 71 yards. How about that? The dogs are right back. You got a passing attack, and you committed to throwing the ball to the tight ends. They are really wild cards because they get lost with the safeties and the linebackers. And when you got guys that are athletes like those tight ends for Georgia and get them deep, it could have been two touchdowns of tight ends so far in this game. That's how you answer the bell, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> I got to keep putting my card over. You just like defense, offense. You know, it happens so fast. Half hides as the extra point. They go two plays, they go 71 yards in 27 seconds. We told you to keep an eye on the tight ends. And here comes Randy McMichael, the redshirt freshman from Fort Valley, Georgia. 
See the safety just goes a bit off the corner right there. His back is trying to get there, but that ball is going to be like a rocket. That's when that strong arm really comes back. Bad angle by Myers, young football player, and it costs him seven points. Bad sight for Georgia and its fans. Charles Grant, their outstanding freshman defensive end from Oakwood, Georgia, on crutches. Hopefully, he'll be back playing in their bowl game from the end zone. Kelly Campbell returns this kickoff out to the 26-yard line. Now they pitch to Gregory. Beats the linebacker and explodes across the 35-yard line. 16 more yards. And now Gregory is the leading rusher for Georgia Tech, passing his quarterback, Joe Hamilton. These wide receivers for Georgia Tech do so much in the offense. Kerry Watkins that time came right across the middle and got a great block. Watkins only about 185 pounds. Helping the running game. Hamilton with the hot hand. He's hit his last six passes. They stay on the ground because big hole is being ripped through the middle of that Georgia defense. Noah King, the senior center here from Panama City, leading the way. The guards, Brent Key from Trussville, Alabama, and Jason Burks out of Vinemont, Alabama. And they're doing it against a couple pretty good football players inside. Marcus Stroud, Richard Seymour, Kendrell Bell. You can block those guys. You know you're doing a good job. Will Weatherspoon's in there right now. middle linebacker. 13 carries for 47 yards for Gregory. That double wing look that they like, and they'll throw out of it, too. Good protection. High incomplete. So the streak ends. Joe Hamilton's patting him on the chest right there, saying it was my fault. Threw a little high. I was talking to Ralph Friedgen yesterday. We were talking about Quincy Carter being a two-sport baseball player. I was asking him if he thinks he could be a great quarterback doing it part-time. And he said, well, Joe's the best point guard at Georgia Tech. He doesn't play basketball. I believe him. I believe him. Third down now for Hamilton. Keeps it. No first, I don't believe. Uh, the Georgia defense was ready and dusted lucky out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Bobby and those Knowles will head off to the Sugar Bowl, or in all likelihood, they'll be playing Virginia Tech after Tech's very impressive win against Boston College yesterday as Colorado carries Nebraska into overtime, and the Buffaloes should have beaten the Cornhuskers yesterday. That should be enough to send Virginia Tech to New Orleans. Here's Gregory. Pounds off the right side, and the dogs hold. Looked like he fell forward, but you can never tell if the penetration was before deep enough that he didn't fall over the line. Both coaches now have tried a fourth down attempt. Look at Joe. Joe's really going to make the call here. Look at He's right there. They do hold. <laughs> Both teams go for a fourth down play. Both teams don't make it. Enough penetration to the right side. Kind of just freezes the fullback that time, and Gregory falls forward. Boy, you would think that would have been enough. My first inclination was that he was short, but then I saw him fall forward, and obviously he didn't work. Now Sanks and Pass are in the Georgia backfield. Down by seven. Quincy Carter with Michael operating the tight end. Gets time. Fires back to Greer, who's got it. First down, Georgia. Michael Greer was a, originally a starter for this football team. Kind of lost the starting job. Early in the year, he had migraine headaches and got a little bit of a hamstring. But he had a great football game last week against Old Miss, coming in the fourth quarter, making some great catches. Ah, uh, 
baseball players come back if they get a shot to play quarterback, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Chris Winky down at Florida State, chance to play for a national title, quarterback keeper. There yeah. is that late pitch now to pass out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And speaking of Quincy Carter, we asked him, what brought you back from baseball to college football? All the college games were on and baseball season was still going on and I was still having to be in the locker room while the, uh, while the national anthem was playing and you know, I'm trying to catch some college football games and at the same time get ready to go up to bat because I was the leadoff out of that day. Yeah, the cheerleaders are much better looking in Athens than they are at Daytona yeah, Beach right. down there in the minor <laughs> leagues. Let me tell you, folks, no contest and the bands are much better too. Second down now. Here's Quincy hauling back. Ball high. Fires. Got McMichael again. And the big fellas in a rumble. Down to the 41-yard line. He makes a living off his tight ends. 20 more yards. It's a very simple pass. It's a tight end delay right here. This tight end will block. The tight end from this side will come across, delay, and come right under. Watch this unfold here. Block for just one count. Let the tight end pass. Come right underneath it. Easy pitch and catch. Not a lot of thinking for the quarterback on this play, but puts tremendous pressure on the defense. McMichael, four catches, 112 yards here in the first half. Georgia trailing by seven and driving. Play back Carter. Under pressure, fires high and incomplete. Johnson, the intended receiver. Carter. Shotgun fires. Got him again. And it is the sure-handed one. Michael Greer, the junior from Athens, for 11 more yards. And today, the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One navigating the skies above Bobby Dodd Stadium. Great aerial coverage here of this action. The Blimp is powered by twin 68 horsepower engines, enabling it to reach a maximum speed of 55 miles an hour at an altitude of 7,000 feet. Look to the skies for the MetLife Blimp at future sporting events throughout the year. Gorgeous view of the Atlanta skyline here. First down for the Dogs. And the shotgun to throw back against the pressure. Here's Green on the flanker screen. And Greer is inside the 20-yard line. A well-conceived play. Jim Donnan has found something right here. When they spread out the Bulldogs do with three receivers to this side, Tech is bringing the safeties this way and giving man-to-man -man coverage for the backside. You see two first downs and then a throwback little screen. You got one guy, the only guy back there to stop this play. Free safety Myers comes over late. You find a little pressure point and you just work it. Donnan has found one. First down and ten. Power run, touchdown. Robert Arnaud out of Morrow, Georgia, bolts 19 yards with his first carry of the game. And that could tie it up at 17, pending the extra point. You got to feel great for a guy like Robert Arnaud. Started his first game as a freshman in 1995, had to redshirt a year with an injury, has been a backup here as a senior, gets in the game and gets the score against the rival. Half Hines for the tie. Held it to the left, but got it through, I believe. Yes, he did. That baby was hooking, wasn't it? it sure Almost was. in the other fairway. They look like our golf game yeah. out here. Slices, hookings, and knuckleballs. Mine never goes to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of no contest, both of these quarterbacks are finding it easy going against these two defenses that have been suspect all year. Quincy Carter, I think, is finally comfortable. They've opened up the offense for him. takes a knee down there in the end zone and it'll come out on the 20 yard line <laughs> Hamilton now the pitch fumble Berger wraps it up at the 25 but a mistake so the Georgia Bulldogs come rallying behind the right arm of Carter who goes over the top for the first one and then Arnott powers in for the second one. And Quincy Carter with a successful rally. Remember last week against Ole Miss, he had to rally in the fourth quarter to pull it out. Tied now at 17, and it'll be second down and about 16 yards from where they spotted the ball. Play fake. Hamilton. Fires. Campbell's got it out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Just a little short of the first down, however. Beautiful timing that time. 
Joe Hamilton comes out, knows he's got a deep drop, comeback route to the outside, coming back out here. Now watch when this ball is let go. Campbell isn't even out of his break yet as Joe Hamilton throws that ball right now. Look at that easy lane to throw it. High school guys can throw that one. That's easy pitch and catch, perfect timing. Now the third and short. And the dogs will move a backer right over the nose of the center. Looking in case Joe Hamilton keeps it, he does. He slips the tackle for a first down. The play was read perfectly by Boss Bailey, yeah, right. champ's younger brother, <laughs> and he simply could not make the tackle in the backfield. I don't think he believed that Joe had the ball. It was great ball handling that time, and Boss Bailey ran right by him, and Joe slithers for a first down. That was huge. 2.17 to go now for Tech. Georgia stays in the zone. Very, very soft zone. Now throw it on first down this time, but Hamilton can't find somebody open. So he takes off. Crosses midfield. Out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Another first down on a 12-yard scamper. And now Hamilton here in the first half has rushed for 61 yards and eight carries. How would you like to defense that? Drop back in the pocket. You got a guy that can do all that stuff. And Joe Hamilton, as a former athlete, I like to call him an athlete right there, chose Georgia Tech over Nebraska. He looked good there. And how good would Courtney Brown look in this team? I mean, two losses away from Georgia Tech being a real player in this thing. First down. Hamilton pulls it off the fake. Got him wide open. There's White. 24-yard line, 23 yards on the pass. Joe Hamilton's going to have to take a timeout on this one because he got hit right when he threw the ball. Watch Kendrell Bell come in here and hit him. Des White's going to stop right here. He's wide open. Joe comes out. Here comes number 37. Look how early he had to throw that football. He got pasted when he let it go. He looked over the bench and he wanted to call time. And Ralph said, nope. <laughs> First down. Take again, and Hamilton stays in the air, end zone, end zone. Uh -oh. they threw a flag on that one, yes. Yep. No question about it. Was pass interference on Jeff Harris, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida. He was riding him into the goal. But these two receivers and the combination of what Joe can do, look at, he's looking over here. These two guys miscommunicating, do not know what it is. The ball gets snapped when they're talking, and they really don't get in position, and that's what causes the interference there, a lack of communication, and that's what those different formations do to you. Not as penal as the NFL flag. It's a 15-yarder from the spot. Puts it inside the 10-yard line. Gives Georgia Tech a first and goal. Deadlocked at 17. Wishbone look, play fake. Hamilton rolling, keeps it. Eyes in zone, guys. And he is wrapped right at the goal line. Is he going to get He up? was met at the pass. Harris and Larry Mann oh, just my. collided with Hamilton as he was going for the end zone. Bootleg. <clears throat> Bootleg play right here. Joe tries to get to the end zone on his own. Watch him get hit coming from this side. Oh, my goodness. Bootleg has the option of throwing to Ed Wilder right there. The fullback will watch this collision. Holy cow. And this is a second down and goal. Bet on a handoff. Here it comes. Touchdown, Randall Rack. As Gregory pounds it in again. What a perfect drive for Joe Hamilton. He ran the option. He ran the play action pass. He ran the bootleg and kept it. And then he kept his composure, got up off the mat, took a timeout and stuck it into the end zone. What a great two minute drive. 80 yards and nine plays in 245. And Luke Fonge adds the extra point. Georgia Tech for the third time today goes ahead and time runs out here in the first half. So the shootout underway between Georgia and Georgia Tech.
24-17, Tech leads it. And the Yellow Jackets, led by Joe Hamilton, takes the hit. After a timeout, ends it off. Tech leads it. We're at halftime. Timeout. Georgia Tech leads Georgia in a game with 41 points and more than 560 yards of offense already. Uh, Gary Danielson, what do you make of it? What's your impression? Uh, water kind of seeks its own level. I think that's probably sums it up. The offenses have played about the way I expected. Unfortunately for both teams, the defenses have played about the way everybody expected in this football game. A lot of points, a lot of offense, uh, far from over. Who do you think will score last? <laughs> if Joe Hamilton has the ball at the end of this game, I put my money on that guy, I think. <laughs> Well, Hamilton will get it first. And Georgia with the ball on the tee to kick it off here. They'll take a knee on that one and bring it on out. Let us check in on the Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, first half stat. Well, in the open, we talked about 900 yards they average. You can see the defenses were giving up over 800. There we are, over 500 yards plus at halftime. You know, the key thing that I think so far in this game, remember, Georgia Tech comes into this game rated last in all of college football in turnover margin. No turnovers in this game. That's why in Tech's up a bit here. Hamilton at the line. Play fake. Going to put it up on first down. Got it. Des White. Jack Aru, what the coaches have to say. Well, Brent, Jim Donnan talked about one thing. Only the offense. He said, hey, our receivers have got blinkers flashing in front of you, and you can't hit them. Now, over on the offensive side of the ball for Georgia Tech, they were concerned about Joe Hamilton, their quarterback. I asked Joe how he was. He said, it's not my hip. I took a little bit of a hit in my knee. He's wearing a rubber brace to try and stabilize it. All right, Jack. Hamilton on a play fake. Gets protection. And... Fires right on the money to Des White, Wansley the defender, but that is another first down. And Georgia Tech, to steal a phrase from Hank Stram, is simply matriculating right down the field here, lads. That's 17 yards. Yeah, but it's all matriculating to the left side, a mismatch. Wide receiver, everything's going to the left side of the formation. And right now, Tim Wansley, number two, is having a problem. He's going to need help. Seymour and Stroud are out as Georgia rotates defensive linemen here. Hamilton on a keeper, turns back and dives across the 30-yard line. Over on the backside, the left tackles, my friend. Here comes Campbell on an end around. Breaks free, and he's inside the 15-yard line and out of bounds at the 13. seen about every offensive play you can imagine. Ralph's got them all out. Here comes option pitch coming back the other way. Watch Chris Campbell, the big tackle, get a cleanup block here from the back side. That's really what's going to open it up right there. Get it out, and there's the gas right there. Chris Brown, the big tackle, peels back and gets the block. And gives Tech another first down inside the 15-yard line. Wishbone look. Watkins goes back. Keeps it in the middle of the defense. Marcus Stroud said, not this time, little fella. Huge split that time by the offensive guard. Stroud, they tried to put on an island that time. Stroud just beat his man up front. They tried to run that kind of midline option right at him, and he just made the play. Second down. Gregory behind Wilder. White's the slot receiver for Hamilton. Let's look. Here's Gregory. And Witherspoon tackles him. And this will bring up a third and long. So Georgia Tech moves inside the 15-yard line without any trouble. And then Georgia holds on two plays. to reach the three, almost the two-yard line for a first down. No help out here. Motion. Hamilton. Right side. Incomplete. He knew he was facing coverage. He threw it out there to see if Watkins could run under it. He could not, and it's field goal time for Tech. That's what you love about Joe Hamilton. He doesn't give up on a play. 
He just doesn't scramble out of there. He says, listen, I don't want to take a sack, but I just don't want to get nothing out of it. I'll throw it up there. Either my guy gets it or nobody. And worst thing is, we get a try for a field goal. Which could give Tech a 10-point lead. This will be a 29-yard attempt against Georgia. And he nails it. 27-17 on the Manje, 29-yarder. Timeout. Manje, who just made it a 10-point game, will kick it off because Newman's kickoff sailed out of bounds late in the first half. So Manje now handling kickoff chores. Milliken and Pass are back deep for the Dogs. Pass number six, shaking and trying to get loose down there by the goal line. Well covered high kickoff. Edwards injured and out. Play fake. Carter rolls hard left drop. Let's take a look at the way Quincy Carter is attacking this field. And what stands out to me, Brad, is look at this. He's hit every zone. He's got them all covered right here. He's gone to all the zones, throwing the ball effectively. That's when you know you got a good pass offense going where you're throwing the ball all over the field. Make them cover the whole field. Both tight ends in the game. Those are the playmakers. Get the ball to the tight end. Greer and Parker are the two wideouts. Carter. Fires high for Greer and incomplete. He probably spent so much time hitting those 6'3 and 6 foot inch tight ends that everything else to a smaller wideout tends to go high as Greer's only 5'10". He started out the first half throwing high. Look at the footwork, comes back, nice bounce, gathered, gathered. I mean, that's just a plain miss. That's when you gotta make, depending on your quarterback, all five of the offensive linemen did a good job, and Quincy Carter has to hit those type of plays. Start off slow in the first half, same in the second. Only two of nine on third down. Middle, deflected, intercepted. Picked off at the 25-yard line, and Georgia Tech on the Tavares Tillman interception. The senior from Lyons, Georgia, and they're in business in the red zone. Tavares Tillman gets the interception. Tavares Johnson is the guy who Quincy Carter tried to go to. The tight end is just outside the picture, coming across the frame. Quincy looks left, comes back, throws the ball, and you can see it. I thought he was interfered on the play that time. Chris Edwards was all over his back, and Javaris Johnson thought he was also. Had his hands all over him. He was more than 10 yards downfield, and actually, while the ball was in the air. Hamilton starts the motion. Looks right, fires inside. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Des White. 18 yards so go for the throat after a turnover how many times have we seen it work at the collegiate at the professional level don't sit on it go now a team that's last in the country in turnovers get a turnover and what happens is come down this guy goes in white goes out and then back in watch this white goes out and then back in that's what really favored him Manje adds the extra point and so joe hamilton has tossed for his second touchdown of the day he also has rushed for 71 yards. Here's Des White. He's going to come out, fake the flag, and then bend into the end zone. Perfect route by Des White. Joe Hamilton has enough time to wait. There's the bend to the outside. Pull back into it. you got to give credit to the offensive coordinator for that design. That's perfect. Well, they may juggle the secondary again in Athens. <laughs> Time out. It was an emotional Georgia Tech sideline following that score led by their other wide receiver, Kelly Campbell, who said they can't come into our house and beat us. Pass from the seven-yard line. Looking for an alley on the left, and he may have it. Out to the 31-yard line where he's brought down. First down, and now Quincy Carter in a serious game of catch-up. Sanks on the screen, and near midfield, a nice play. 
I thought it was pass interference, Brent. Let's take another look at it. Here's the defender, Edwards, right here. Here's the tight end. Chris Edwards is going to mug him just as the ball is thrown. Looks like he grabs his arm as the ball's thrown right there. Ball bounces up in the air. Tillman gets the interception. One more look. Right side of the screen. See how the hand came loose real late that time? I think that was possible. One thing to keep in mind in the college game is you can maintain contact until that ball is in the air. First down and 10. Quincy Carter going to drop it off to the other side. They screen right. Now they screen left. Cross to the 48-yard line. I'm not saying that there was not pass interference. His hand may have stayed on him a little bit too long. But there is a huge difference for a defensive player in this game than in the NFL where they've got that five-yard zone and then you've got to get off them. Second down now coming up for Quincy Carter and the Dogs. From the back, 48. Back of the gun. Left side, first down, and this time they go to Johnson. Here's Arnott, who exploded for a touchdown, and he runs it to the 21-yard line for a first down. Let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, you saw a lot of the emotion on the Georgia Tech sideline. One of the reasons may be because of what's missing in this area. Anybody that's ever watched a game from the Bobby Dodd Field here knows that there's the giant inflatable yellow jacket here. Not today. It seems some Georgia fans vandalized it last night. They couldn't put it up today. In fact, a lot of the players gathered in this area before the game and said, we're going to get one for them. That is a quick finding of guilty by Jack Aroop. Arnott, oh. Kreisen holding on inside the 20-yard line. Forty-five here in the third. Randy McMichael trots back in from down and sideline. A week ago, five trips again inside the twenty-yard line. One touchdown. The big two tight ends are down. And he gets one of them, McMichael, out of bounds, first down inside the 10-yard line. Looks to me like they can work that formation all day long. Tavares Johnson, Randy McMichael, this time it's McMichael, the freshman. Look at his arm over, watch this. Arm over, perfect throw to the outside. That is something that they feel confident throwing the ball and moving the ball down the field. That fellow may have a future. <laughs> He's got one in college and the next one. Arnott the tailback. Dives, touchdown, Georgia. Great cutback. And his second touchdown of this game. Gary, there's a young man. You told the story of what he's come back from, and now he's scored twice. Well, he has. They've been using him inside the 20-yard line as their touchdown back, and he's got him in the end zone twice. But, boy, that was a nice answer. Jim Donnan using his talent the way he's got it. He got tight ends, match him up, and throw the ball to him. Nice drive. Robert Arnott, a senior out of Morrow, Georgia, playing in his last Georgia-Georgia Tech game. Clinkdale. <laughs> On a play break down by Hamilton. Stands tall and uses the fullback Wilder as a pass receiver for a first down. A slick 11-yard play going to Wilder as a receiver in this game for the first time. What's underrated about Joe Hamilton, we've talked about his athletic ability, his throwing ability, it's his decision-making. He's running this fast break offense. Look how quick he's back up at the line of scrimmage to keep Georgia completely off balance. Now with this quarterback draw in behind Wilder. 
to the 45-yard line. Another good call. That's a 16-yard gain. A quarterback draw all the way. And Wilder got out in front of the quarterback that time and was uh, helping lead the way. Now 12 carries for 87 yards rushing for Hamilton. There's Ralph Friedgen, the architect of this thing. Says his hero is Rick Majerus. Speaking of hero. Ralph, yeah, indeed. Speaking <laughs> of Friedgen, LSU, give him a call. Yeah, why Take not? Him down there. My goodness, nobody else seems to want that job. Talk to Ralph Regan. A change. Says White. Says White to the seven-yard line. The young man who a short time ago caught his 14th career touchdown pass here at Georgia Tech, equaling the school record, has just caught a 23-yarder. Remember, Ralph was in the pro game. This is what the pros do. You find a matchup that you got, and that's a push-off. Wansley was calling it to the referee that time, and he was right. Pushed him right on the head. You said he was a pro coach. That's right. Pro coach, he teaches a pro pass route right there. Eight catches, 134 yards. Next scare. Stood up at the five-yard line. So Gordon Clinksdale, the redshirt freshman, out of Doraville, Georgia, getting some playing time here with Gregory over on the sideline. Yeah, that, that is really a style of an NFL coach. If you got something in your favor, you just keep it in your pocket and you go to it when you need it. Right now, Friedgen says, I've got a first down anytime I want it by running the deep out to the left side. I can Stroud's in the game. Play fake Hamilton. Fires back. Touchdown! And it's Joe Hamilton goes to his tight end. Conrad Andrzejewski for the touchdown. This Bulldog secondary gouged all year. Ben Laird embarrassed them, and now they're facing a better quarterback today than Ben Laird. Luke Manje. The neon flickers in Atlanta. The rambling wreck. 41. Georgia, 24, with 3.20 left in the third quarter. Hey, oh man. this on the high kickoff, okay? Fielded by pass. I'm going to go back on that draw in a moment here. Pass looks for daylight. And he's down on the 30 yard line. Uh, 244 to go now in the third. 800 and counting in total yards with another quarter to play. Play fake. Gets protection. Coming down the middle. And he simply overthrew a wide open Thad Parker. We send it to New York and John Saunders. John? Yeah, that's a pretty good neighborhood war down there too, Mr. Saunders. No one's getting close here either, Frank. To the man, but even offense. Now Carter, left tackle does a good job, and he threw a high to Johnson that time. And Jonas Jennings threw a good there, block on that yeah, side. Yeah, he did. Brent, there's nothing in Carter's footwork or release that would indicate why he's throwing high, except that he's just juiced. Too up, too fired up to do everything on every play. He needs to settle down and just let things happen. His footwork is fine, his delivery is fine. He's just thrown high on maybe eight passes so far in this game. And he may have missed the touchdown. Absolutely, two of them. We had one early in the game and another one right there. So here's third down. They flood the left side. Four wide receivers will go down. Under pressure and sack. The second sack of the game as Felipe Claybrooks pours in for the Ramblin' Wreck. Earlier, Claybrooks forced Carter out of the pocket by beating offensive tackle Jennings. This time he does the same thing right here. Gets off on the snap, runs right this time, goes inside Jennings, and no escape in this one, no matter how good of an athlete you are. Top punting for Georgia. Inside at two minutes in the third quarter. Hester back deep to return it for Georgia Tech. And feel it. Loose Georgia. Georgia has it at the 10-yard line. 
a scoring chance as Hester coughs it up again, and it will be first and goal for the dog. Hester just misjudged this play. Stood there, stood there, stood there, and then the ball ended up being over his shoulder. It was up a lot. Watch how he has to turn, and it's actually behind him. See that? Just misjudged the ball, and that's what cost him. Remember in the first half when he yep. didn't look around? Well, this time Jermaine Phillips doesn't <laughs> miss. Number five wraps it up, and he gives the Dogs a golden scoring opportunity. One that they have to score, and they have to put seven points. Arnaud with two touchdowns lined up behind Carter. The quarterback, keeper around the left side. Patea walks. Touchdown. Quincy Carter gives the dogs a life as he circles the left side. Quarterback counter this time. Robert Arnott does it again. The remaining running back he either scores or this time he gets a big block on the play. What a big turnaround. I thought this game could have got ugly if Tech just catches the punt. Now Hines pulling one to the left again, but through it goes. He's an adventure, but they're good. And he's back to 10 again, a 134. This one far from over. It's a 10-point game, 41-31 now, 134. defensive lineman here today, some by necessity. They've had an injury and an ejection up front. Remember, they, they need some stops against one of the best quarterbacks in the country. A multi-faceted offense. Play fake. Hamilton under pressure, throws high. Des White almost made an acrobatic catch, but it's incomplete and it's third and nine. And that was one-on-one -on -one coverage that time. Finally, Timmy Wansley gets a win against Des White. Comes out there and knocks the ball down, and uh, Friedgen goes right to where he thought it was. The outside of the play comes in and out, and watch the coverage. Right out of all the way, the ball's thrown, and finally, Wansley wins one. You got to admire him. He's hanging in there. Third down and nine. Middle of the field should be open. He'll look at it from the gun. Keeps his eye in the middle. Now sprints out, throws back to it. Fumble incomplete. Right in the middle of it off. He had it right there, right at the first down marker. And there was a juggle by Kelly Campbell. And Georgia Tech forced the punt. And suddenly, the dogs with a huge life following that big mistake on the punt by Hester. One thing you always have to realize that when you're a football player, your competitor in any sport is forget this momentum thing. I know a lot of people believe in it, but if you're an athlete, you got to not believe in it. You gotta say, just keep playing. Look up after the end of the game and find out what's happening. Just ask Colorado. The most important snap's the next one. And yeah. Cash is gonna let this one roll down, and now Quincy Carter will take over 65 yards away. Quincy Carter's got ice cold. He's missed his last four. Remember, he ran in for the touchdown after the fumble punt. 19 to 35 overall. One touchdown, one interception. 244 yards. He must get this ball to the 45-yard line, or they'll be close to punt. In trouble, steps away. Now fires. Got it! But a penalty flag comes down. It's going to be pass interference, but Georgia what will decline What a great run. It. Yep. First down, Randy McMichael, the huge tight end There's from Fort Valley, Georgia. They're something, aren't they? Well, Those two, two guys, guys they amazing. really are. Holding today. against the defense during the pass, the penalty is declined. First down. Quincy Carter was so good with his footwork that time. We talked about how well he throws without his feet. Watch his technique right here. Gets in the pocket. Nice bounce. Now he comes up. Now watch him throw all our Watch. Quick. You don't have time to set up. You just got to throw no matter where your feet are. That's how you make those plays as an athletic quarterback. The offensive line is doing a good enough job that they can send out both tight ends. 
as receivers. That's the quarter. As the quarter runs out. A 10-point game, 41-31. Georgia Tech with the lead, but they'd have even a bigger lead, except for the mistake. Hester back. Coughs it up. Phillips recovers. From there, Quincy Carter scores. Back for the fourth quarter after this message. And a word from our ABC stations. Our producer, Bob Goodrich, over the ABC trucks. Very close by. He wants two hot dogs and a chocolate milkshake. Will you send it over for him, please? He's a little hungry. Now. Take Bob, the boys, huh? send the bill to Bob after, right? Yeah. <laughs> He'll pick that dinner up. That. That's a cheap one. First down and 10. Quincy Carter and the dogs trailing it by 10. Carter comes straight back. It's good protection, incomplete. Just off a little bit. But we must say that that Georgia line, Jennings, Steve Herndon, Lucky, the brother of the lad who was kicked out, Breedlove, and Stinchcomb are doing a fine job of pass protection out there. Breedlove is another true freshman playing in the SEC. That takes a lot of talent to play offensive line. Number seven. And John Stinchcomb is the brother of Matt, who was drafted in the first round by the Raiders last year. He was an All-American tackle here. He's a redshirt freshman, the younger one. He's on Carter, straight back, looks sideline, fires, intercepted on atrocious pass, and Hester, who fumbled the punt, gets a chance by picking off the pass thrown by Carter. There is a penalty flag down, however, at midfield. Uh, so hold Georgia on. Fans. Georgia Tech is offside. Yep. Five oh, yard Passing game is communication between the receiver and the quarterback. You'll see the jump off sides. Good call. Just as the ball is snapped, he's in the neutral zone. His feet are still there. That's a good call. In fact, the linesman was in front of the Georgia Tech bench that made the call. So you know it wasn't anybody from Georgia in his ear that time. But Quincy Carter dodged one there because the receiver, Phillips, ran a different route than Carter thought he was that time. He threw a strike for an interception. Second down and five. What a fresh life for Georgia. Here's the two tight ends together right here. Quarterback Brooks looking for a first down. Got Spins to the 33-yard line. First down. Georgia on a 13-yard run by Quincy Carter, who has now rushed six times for 15 yards. A quarterback matchup that we knew would be good. Just look how good it is. Joe Hamilton having almost a career day. Of course, every time he plays, it's like that. But Quincy Carter, who's going to make a run, Brent, I, I believe he's going to be one of the most front runners for that Heisman next year. He is going to make a run. He and Michael Vick are going to give Drew Brees all he can handle. Carter swings it out to the right. Here comes Sanks back on the field. Inside the 30, busts his way power play for another Georgia. First down. Tell you, Jasper Sanks right here, smart runner. He knew where his help was going to be. His help is going to come from the guard coming out. He swings out and cuts behind the guard. Watch this. Little flip play. This is almost like a run. Here comes Breedlove. Now cut inside of him. Set him up, cut inside. You don't even need a block sometimes. Just knowing where your help is is good enough. Down by 10. With the first down inside the 25. And Michael skims to the right on the formation. Got Johnson, the other tight end. And it only took three white jerseys to bring him down around the 15-yard line. Myers was there, Wimbush was there, and help from their friends that time. As you look down on our scene here, late afternoon, 41-31, and a wild one. Georgia Tech leading Georgia with 13-20 left in regulation. Brent, that's the 10th catch for the tight end position. Six and four between those two guys. And it won't end there. Second down. Pitch back. Tanks has got it. End zone. Touchdown, Georgia. A beautiful pitch by Quincy Carter, who spent part of his pregame working on that quick pitch to the trailing back. A 15-yard run. The defense bought Carter, and he just simply put it into Sank's hand. 
Jim down and kind of kept his hand close, but you could almost smell today that he was going to use the action play. Watch him freeze the defensive end when he pitches that thing, and then Sanks just takes it right into the end zone. And Hines, that's his spot, pulling it to the left. 41 now, 38. It's a three-point game. Eight plays, 65 yards in 235. Sanks closes in on Georgia Tech. And we've got a timeout in Atlanta. That's a lot of winning on the other folks' field. And Jim Donnan's starting to make up plays as we go along here. And a wild one. You see featuring more than 800 yards already. We've still got 13 minutes left in regulation. Glover and Campbell go back deep for Chad Hunneman. Is it a free pizza or something if we get to 1,000? again making the play on Will Glover. Now Glover, a freshman from Tampa, is going to have to play because Kerry Watkins has been ejected from the game. And right now it looks to me like this offense misses Watkins, who was ejected because of that little tussle he got into a short time ago. You'll miss this in the first half of the Tech Bowl game. And the coaches were not pleased when he came to the sideline. Over the middle, incomplete, misfired on Campbell. And now big third down coming up for Tech. Kevin Ramsey, defensive coordinator for Georgia, has decided to take away Des White now. Tilting his defense towards Des White. Doesn't feel as threatened by the three wide receivers. A good call by Ramsey. Here's White down at the bottom. He's going to get help from a safety deep. Hamilton needs to reach the 46-yard line. Under pressure. Steps away from it, and he'll take off, but he'll be far short. And Georgia Tech is forced to punt. Great play by Marcus Stroud, their junior defensive tackle out of Barney, Georgia. It's amazing how delicate these offenses are built and how important every part is to it. Last week against Wake Forest, Tech loses Des White, things get out of sync. Today, Watkins goes down, things out of sync. Dyke Punny. Pass from the 21. Run out of bounds by Myers on that far side at the 25-yard line. August 6 says, come on, Quincy, keep it up. We're only down three. Timeout. First down. There it is again. There one six. Big hole in the middle. Comes out four. 12 more yards and another first down, Georgia. So it'll be second down and five. We get word from the Division I AA playoff. Illinois State beat up on Colgate today, 56 to 13. Our director, Drew Ezekoff, says we should double check that score, lad. So, no, it's official. Sorry, Drew, about that. The gate didn't come through. They were an underdog in that one anyway. Illinois State's got a good team. Second down. Here's the option. Look the other way. Pitch to Sanks. Short of the first down. The option has kind of popped into this football game. And, you know, Brent, I talked about the four wide receivers, one running back being a better formation. That has really moved in this football game right now. Keep the tight ends in the game and run the action. That's a freshman, Alex Jackson, who has to step in at that left tackle spot on third down and one. Jackson with his hands full. They immediately put a tight end. Johnson next to him to help him. They pitch it to halfback pass. And pass throws it through. Got it. A beautiful.
beautiful halfback option play from Patrick Pass to Michael Greer, 31 yards, and the Dogs are in business. Remember, Patrick Pass is also a baseball player, drafted by the Florida Marlins. You know you got to have some kind of an arm. Split screen here. Greer goes inside, fakes the crack. Watch how he holds off the defender right here. Slows down, keeps the defender on his back, and makes the catch. Doesn't reach back. He reaches forward to catch the ball. Perfect job of making a pass. Look perfect from pass. Pass from pass. So our two tight ends today, they have been difference makers with 11 receptions for 188 yards and one touchdown. 13 for 132, but now perhaps the most important drive of this football game. A first down outside the 10-yard line. Shotgun look Carter. Going to run with it. Cut to the outside. Not much doing. Myers forces him out of bounds at the nine-yard line, bringing up a second down. Jeremy Myers had 17 tackles a week ago against Wake Forest. When you get the ball run on you that many yards, maybe your safety has to make that many tackles. A freshman out there, brother is a wide receiver. Coming up and making a big stop. They trail it by three, 41-38. Second down. Here's Sacks. This will be third down from the six-yard line. Georgia Tech continues to stay in a soft zone. Don't have any confidence in their man-to-man -man ability against the receivers, basically the tight ends. Teddy Roof staying in the zone, even inside the 10-yard line. And if the defense holds here for Georgia Tech, the dogs would be forced to kick a tying field goal, or at least attempt one. They've got a third down, and they need about six yards for a first down. they got the two big tight ends, remember. Carter's going to go for it from that shotgun look. Wants to roll to the right, fire corner, incomplete, and it is fourth down. Fourth down coming up. The Georgia bench, not that interference should have been called down there, but uh, I'm not sure about that. I, I think Thad Parker caught the ball, but he was out of bounds. Here it is right here. It's going to be a fade, come back to the outside. Quincy's going to come out and see if Parker doesn't catch it, but he's out of bounds. See how he's out of bounds right there? Are you sure he's out good, of bounds? That's a good call. I think. He only need one foot in bounds in a college game. I think he's out of bounds. Landed right out of bounds right there. And he went down, and so here comes the 23-yarder. Here's half Hines. This for the tie. It's his angle. That's the way he kicks it. That was a setup for him from the right hash. No question. That is 17 unanswered Georgia points to tie this game at 41. They were down by 17. Here it is. Another look at the receiver who made a great effort on this game. Watch the knee. See, it looks like it's up in the air to me right there, and he lands out of bounds. Thad Parker. Tied at 41. Do you like offense? <laughs> Stay tuned, everybody. And there's Georgia on fire, coming from 17 down to tie the game with six and a half minutes to go here at Atlanta. An old neighborhood rivalry for a year's worth of bragging rights, just like an Alabama, Auburn, or Arizona, Arizona State. You can go on. The teams that don't have a national championship at stake, but they want to win this game. Holloman into the end zone, and Campbell with that speed coming out again. 25, 30. Fine return. 922 total yards in this game. We are over the 900 mark. We're deadlocked now. It is first and 10. Hamilton. Oh! Picked off. It's intercepted. Ball never hit the ground. Interception. Georgia inside the 50-yard line. Great grab by Cap Burnett. 23. A redshirt freshman stayed right with it off Meyer's hands. This was like a Matt Davison one, off the feet, off the hands for Nebraska, only the offense got it. Watch Myers lay out on this ball. Wansley, who's hanging in the football game, but it's different covering this guy. And I can't tell if that hit the ground or not, or if there was a little bump before the ball was there, to tell you the truth. Same official on the other side, yep. and I believe it hit that other leg when it came up. There didn't seem to be any question he was all over it. Now it is Georgia. 
in Georgia Tech territory. First down and 10. And here's Johnson, the tight end, ridden out of bounds at the 40-yard line by Ricardo Wimbush. Well, the Matt Davison play, of course, was the miracle catch in the end zone. No, this was a bounce off of one guy, off some shoes, and a catch by the offense. And here's one that goes to the defense. When the ball starts bouncing around here, anybody can get it. And I don't think it hit the ground. Second down. Carter. First down, shots in the tight end bounds inside the 35 yard line and they simply cannot find a way now to get Johnson or McMichael out in this game. Two remember, outstanding tight ends. Remember the pressure point that Ralph Friesen and Georgia Tech used against Georgia to the outside to come back. Well the pressure point against the Tech defense is right there. Linebacker against the tight end. A better receiver against a linebacker that isn't used to covering people man to man. Johnson now with 7 for 63. McMichael 6 for 136. It's there again. Both of them standing up. They'll run Sanks. Keep the defense honest. Can't get up on the run. Down to the 31 yard line. Carter's back in the shotgun. Edwards coming through. Got it. Johnson inside the 20, rumbles, dives, end zone, touchdown, touchdown, Johnson takes it in, 30 yards out, and Georgia goes ahead after being down by 17. That's how you go for the pylon. Last week, the Ohio State runner Jonathan Wells didn't go for the pylon, it cost Ohio State. This is how you go for it, lay out, touch the pylon, and you get six points and a possibility for the extra point here. What a catch, because that was a rocket. Carter threw to him. He'll be coming to the left. No, we laid that one out the other way. Got it. It's a seven-point lead at 5-12. 48-41 with Joe Hamilton still coming to bat. Third and five. They're just going to come right out of here. It's man-to-man -man coverage all the way this time. Just their guy beat Tech's guy. Watch this throw. Pretty good coverage. Oh, nice catch. Stretched out. Now watch him take it for the pylon. Reach out. Dive. And touches it. That's all you need as Chris Young came across to get him, but too late. And Joe Hamilton waits his turn. If Joe does it and brings him back, he's going to have to do it without two of his key receivers, Campbell and Watkins. Defense has slowed down since Watkins was ejected and now Campbell is out with an injured left ankle we are told by Jack LaRue down below Holloman and this will be Des White left side and Des with a fine return out to the 32 the option here's Gregory powerful run for about 8 yards on first down and Georgia Tech coming down the stretch. Joe Hamilton, three timeouts remaining, has all the time he needs on this. He can take his time, run the ball, make first downs, no hurry. I just don't know if he has enough weapons, enough speed at wide receiver. That'll be the question. Glover is the slot man, Myers outside him, Des White short side. They're gonna option it for a first down. And Gregory, about four yards shy of midfield with Richard Seymour making the Georgia stop. He was tackled by number 93, Richard Seymour. So the clock stops now as the chains are moved. Two things you don't want to do in golf, Brent. Play behind Jasper Parnovic, he's so slow, or schedule a golf tournament right after a Georgia-Georgia Tech game. This thing will last forever. Hamilton comes right side and there's Glover. Wansley the defender and he's got a first down at the 40 yard line on a 15 yard throw from Hamilton to the freshman Will Glover out of Tampa's Jesuit High School. 
Wansley was in perfect position to make a play on this one, but just played it a little too conservatively. I always tell young quarterbacks that the pressure switches to the defensive backs late in the game. They don't want to give up the big play. You can throw in front of them. Now it's White and Myers, and Hamilton pulls out. Got Des White, got him. Oh, what a great catch by Des White. Fingertip control, out of bounds at the seven yard line. First and goal as Ralph Friedgen moves his fastest wide receiver still on the field to the short side, gets the matchup for 32 yards. Wansley fights. He needed either to get a jam on him to help this safety coming over the top here. Watch him fight. Comes up on the run, yep, no run. Ball's thrown out in a wonderful fingertip catch by Des White. Now Joe Hamilton, dangerous on the run. They show the wishbone. Wilder lines up as the fullback. Gregory and Des White are the halfbacks. Joe keeps it and slips to the five-yard line. That was Stroud pulling him down as we pass that magic 1,000-yard mark here. 1,029 total 1, yards. Us Purdue guys just estimated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've got Roger Riley over there. All right. We just estimated. With the move, man, I've got all my helpers. I've got an advantage. <laughs> Second down and goal. Play fake. Too far out in front of him. All right, that's that's Gregory, out. and he led him by too much. And it will be third and goal from the six-yard line. Nicely set up that time. Noah King and Brent Key were both out there on a little bit of a slip screen. And you're right, the ball was just going a little too wide. Now, Ralph Friedgen obviously has two downs to get the touchdown here. They're down by seven. There's 2.42 on the clock. They don't want to be settling for any field goal right now. Remember the bootleg that Joe ran in before. See if they don't get him out of the pocket. Georgia has to be aware, of course, of the quarterback draw. I'm sure that's well defended. Hamilton moving hard left, throws it, got his man, clever, touchdown, Georgia Tech, and we're an extra point away from being deadlocked at 48, as Hamilton makes the play, but how about this freshman from Tampa, Will Glover, stepping in there and replacing Campbell and Watkins. Jamie Henderson this time just lays a hit on Glover, getting Joe out of the pocket, opportunity to run or pass, watch, perfect throw, look at this hit, oh! Catch it, and your hit, hit, head hits the ground. Tied. Manje pounds it. Out of bounds, and so a mistake by the kickoff team. Will it be half Hines again this week? Parker and Phillips are his wideouts. And his two tight ends are the go-to guys. Play fake. Going to come down that sideline again. A wobbler of Phillips. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Second down and 10. No question about it. The receiver was out of bounds. He tried to bait Georgia Tech that time, faking that little flat pass to the tight end, and then going for it all on the first play. Ball kind of drifted on Quincy. Out of bounds. If he'd have kept it in the playing field, might have got an interference call. But the ball was out of bounds, thus no interference. Second down and 10. Deadlocked at 48. A classic. Carter to the middle. Got his time and Johnson drops the ball. One of the first times today that I can remember saying about either tight end, he drops the ball at the 43-yard line, and that brings up a third down. One more stop, and Joey Hamilton will get it back with two minutes to go off a punt. Two minutes to go in all three timeouts, too. Georgia has to have a first down. They can't feel good about Joe getting back on the field again. O'Leary wants one stop out of the defense. Third down and 10. Hamilton wants the ball back in his hands. Carter. Fires for the first down. And diving incomplete. That's going to be an interference. It's a penalty flag down at midfield. And that will give Georgia a fresh life. First down. That's the spot. 
He just turns around and makes himself big. Watch this. Comes out, hooks out. Oh, was catching pass. Excuse me. Look at that. Johnson slipped on the play and passed from behind. Hester comes right over the shoulder to get the interference. Pass checks back in and Arnott leaves. Pass, pretty good athlete. Throw the ball, one route to the receiver. On first down. It's the base 4-3 that Georgia Tech uses and Carter right away. And dropped the screen to pass. Georgia Tech read it, but passed with his athletic ability. Scoots beyond the 45-yard line, made the most of it. Could have lost yardage on the play, but as it is, he gains only about a yard. The last couple of third down throws by Quincy Carter. Tight end for a touchdown and a big interference call right there. He really cranks it on that third down, throws it extremely hard. 2-0-4. Arnott back. Carter will go from the gun. Sprint to the right. On the move, wants that sideline, wants Phillips incomplete. Bracketed beautifully back there by Young and Tillman. So Carter shows a definite tendency to throw the deep ball rolling to the right. He's not that comfortable coming back to the left. It's something we saw Michael Vick do yesterday. Of course, why not? He's a left-hander, right? Makes it a little bit easier when he comes in that direction. But I did see Vick roll to the right a couple times and throw back to the left. This play was again set up for the home run ball. Phillips came out there, bent outside like he was going to go out, and then went deep. 50th pass of the day for Quincy Carter. That's a career high, and this figures to be 51 if he gets it off. Tied at 48, 156 to go. They, he gave him the option. Look, pass, first down, breaks free inside the 35 at the 144 mark. As Quincy Carter uses his head at the line of scrimmage and moves pass over yep. to the other side. Greatness is in the details if you're a quarterback. You have to believe Jim Donovan loved what he saw from his quarterback there, audibling to the option, pitching it out, great blocking up front this time by Jennings, pushing his man by, and there's another third down conversion for Georgia. Great play. Half Hines is over there, and Hines has kicked a 54-yarder this year, coming out of 126. Carter rolls hard to the right, back to the middle, battle for the ball, and Strength wins it. That is McMichael. Randy McMichael took it away for the defensive back that time. On first down, Tillman didn't have a shot, and now McMichael, seven catches for 142 yards, and a timeout has been used by Georgia Tech. Tillman was all over that play. McMichael just beat him to the football. And now it is second down. They can run. Georgia Tech was ready. This will put him down in third down and maybe three, four yards to go here with Greg Gathers making the stop. Remember, this would be a 45-yarder if they don't gain an inch. So no gimmick. They need some more yards, and Georgia will be trying to do everything to get the first down. They would stop the clock and then try to position Hines, and they definitely need to keep him on the right hash. Last two times, in this short situation, third and less than five, Georgia has come with the option. You have to believe that Teddy Roof has called the defense expecting the option. And as you mentioned, Georgia might want to keep that ball right there in the middle of the field. That's McMichael, 86. First down, break spray, great effort that time by Sanks. Number 28, Jasper Sanks, the sophomore from Columbus, Georgia, and their leading rusher this year would not be stopped. 13 yards, and now Georgia can run the clock down before they attempt the field goal. Poor tackling has been the story all year for Georgia Tech, and when they needed it, when they had a chance to stop them, there's the defense. And there's 1999 in a nutshell. Poor tackling by the Georgia Tech defense. 
Ab Hines won it last week against Mississippi. Going to get another chance in the rivalry. Remember, Nebraska took a crack. Here comes Sykes for the end zone. Short of it. They almost put it away with a touchdown with 25 seconds to go. 12 yards. They're letting the clock continue to run. They're going to bring it on down. They'll take a crack and then call the timeout. They need to use it right now. And Young came out of that pile with the football. You could see him in a bit of a tug of war, but I think they put it down. They put it down. Can you believe this? They put it down. Still a, still a little bit of a conference call going on right there. They oh, give us a oh. Georgia Tech. Oh, my. Oh, my. A miracle. Banks has the ball. Keeps both hands on it. Goes down. Ball is loose on contact to the ground. In my opinion, that should not have been a fumble. Nine seconds. And they're going to run it out and take this baby into overtime. They're going to take this game into overtime. Take a deep breath, everybody. We'll take a break. We'll look at some other angles. I'll tell you, I think Gary was right on the money about that one, too. Overtime is coming up. It does appear from the angles that we have seen that the back is down before the ball comes out. Now, folks, you take a good look and you decide what you think. Is he down before the ball comes out? Well, the way I understand it, you're right. Everybody will have an old opinion, whether you have Georgia Tech, I guess, or Georgia eyes here, but I did not think the ground could cause a fumble, and that, to me, is what happened. Gary, I totally agree. But nevertheless, overtime is coming up. We're tied at 48. Back after this word from our ABC station on the 25. Remember, they can get a first down. Carter going to throw that screen to Phillips, and Phillips hit at the 20, spins to the 18-yard line. So they pick up seven yards. Tillman on the tackle. The first possession of overtime. Those of you who are just joining us and flipping on your sets, we've had a wild one in Atlanta. 1,073 yards of total offense. And the yards here count. College overtime yards count in the final statistics. Second down now for Georgia. Three yards for a first down. The intended re receiver was Mitchell, the backup quarterback. Carter wanted to go to the tight end that time, did not get him. Out to the outside, tight end is covered that time by Chris Young. Just throw the ball up, not a bad chance for one in the end zone. Here's the problem, you're going first. You know that Georgia Tech going second can match you, so you have to keep in mind the field goal. Haynes checks in at fullback, number 35. The lead blocker for a nod. A nod straight ahead. Bulls first down, Georgia. Big time run for the 14. Big time blocking up there, too. Kevin Breedlove, the freshman. Miles Lucky doing a gap. Isolation play right up the gut. That call, a little bit different because they knew they had to keep alive the field goal try. We're tied at 48. This is overtime. See, it's three down territory for Georgia. If they score, Georgia Tech will have four down territory because they need seven. Carter throws back incomplete. And he was Georgia pressured Tech by Gathers. 12 men on the field. Georgia Tech had 12 men on the field. He's coming off right now. Here comes the 12th guy jogging off right there. 
they got away with it. He went over and hit on the sideline. Jim Donahue is irate. So now it is second down and ten. Goes in zone, got it, picked off, intercepted in the end zone. Georgia Tech, Marvius Hester, steps right in front of McMichael and picks it off. Quincy Carter made up his mind to go to the tight end on the flat and up. He had Phillips wide open, but he wanted to go to his tight end, and Hester, who hit out on the play before, comes back and finds the ball the next play. What this does, it allows Georgia Tech to win it on a field goal should they get close on fourth down. A field goal would win it. We're tied at 48. Georgia is out in the first overtime period. They will never, ever forget the play that sent this game into overtime. Now, it's Joe Hamilton. Gregory battles for about six yards on first down. How ironic, Georgia Tech last in college football in turnover margin comes up with a fumble recovery on the last play of the year to save the game and then an interception with two guys wide open. Quincy pulls the string and gets intercepted to allow just a field goal to beat him. Manjay with his two field goals and a 44 yarder. Second down. Up. Third down coming up. Staying on that right hash. He was tackled by number 93, Richard Seymour. Regent and O'Leary obviously have talked about what to do with well, this. And just go ahead and set up the field goal yeah. now for Luke Manje and attempt to win it. And, the and here comes Manje on the field right now. They will not even attempt, although unless they want to fake it, but I don't think they will here. A 38-yarder for a Georgia Tech win in overtime from the right half. No, it's blocked. Still so remember, alive. it's third down. It is third down. Yep. It was third down when O'Leary went to the field goal. And, and it, Georgia needed to recover that ball. It's not over. Donnan wants a clarification. Great job that time by the backup quarterback, George Godsey, getting that football. Fourth down. Now it's fourth down. Now fourth it's the down. second chance. That was the third down play, and it's now fourth down. Tremendous coaching move by George O'Leary there, going for it on third down. Gives you more options. The second shot from Manje. Other hash, 38 yards. Penetration kick is up, falling off, good! Luke Manje wins it with a field goal in overtime. 51 to 48. Tech wins with a miracle. And Grant Beard. Fifty-one forty-eight. Georgia Tech beats Georgia in overtime. Stay tuned now for the Skins game next on ABC Sports. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. For Gary Danderson and Jack Aroot, I'm Brett Musburger. For Georgia fans, they'll never forget what happened at the end of regulation. Going in for a winning touchdown, a controversial fumble given to Georgia Tech into overtime. Luke Manje gets a second chance. The football gods were kind to Georgia Tech. Timeout. It's over. So long, everybody.